back to Boro Sword, Revised Edition. Uh, this deck we played at the very beginning of Murders at Karlov Manor Standard, and it did really well uh, for me personally, and then it did awful on stream, and then I played yet another stream, and it again did awful. So uh, we revised the deck, and we'll talk about it from scratch, as though we had d never done so. So this deck is built around Cal and the Feyblottered. We want to use the Birthright Boon Adventure Sorcery to search our library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into our hand, and then shuffle. And then, of course, we want to play Kellen the Fey Blooded because Kellen's a double strike, 2-2 two, two, for 3, where other creatures we control get plus 1, plus 0 for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blooded. So it's sort of its own little combo, um, and we definitely want to be doing that. Uh, we'll start from the top on the things that we want to potentially tutor with Kellen's sorcery ability, starting with Dragon Wing Glider. This is just a one of at the top of the curve case we need to fly over for four. <clears throat> uh, otherwise, we generally don't want to see this card. <laughs> um, we'll move on to Draconic Destiny. Uh, it's still just a one of, but I think this is a worthy target still, giving our creature flying, haste, and fire breathing. And of course, when that creature dies, we can return Draconic Destiny to our hand and cast it again. Also at three, we've got Sword of Forge and Frontier. But this is the less likely sword for us to tutor up. Um, it's not as synergistic with our deck, but sometimes protection from red and green is great. So we get plus two, plus two, protection from red and green, and whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. You may play an additional land this turn. Um, remember that if uh, a double striking creature has a sword, uh, that ability would trigger twice if it connects, which is nice. So same thing here with Sword of Once and Future. This is typically what we're going for. This is the, the namesake sword in Boros Sword. Um, this equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from blue and black. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player surveil two, then you may cast an instant or sorcery with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell will be put in your graveyard, exile instead. Um, other than that, our equipment and tutor abilities are still Eater of Virtue, and Rabbit Battery. We still want to have Eater of Virtue um, creatures die that have haste um, or double strike in the form of Kellen, um, or possibly Trample with Jorkadine. All of these are really relevant. So Eater of Virtue says, uh, whenever a cooked creature dies, exile the creature. As long as a card exile with Eater of Virtue has flying, equipped creature has flying, same is true for double strike, first strike, death touch, haste, hex, roof, indestructible, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so those are all very useful in this deck. And if we already have a rabbit battery in play, uh, we'll typically want to tutor an Eater of Virtue first, unless it's later in the game. It just works really well. So some changes uh, since. There was a... There was a, a First, a Sarah Paragon, and then the Kicker Angel, I forget what it's called right now, at four. We, we've cut that. Um, it's not on theme, and we really moved more into Bloodthirsty Adversary. I think we may have been playing four to begin with, but now we're also on four copies of Jorkadeen. may seem excessive, given that it's legendary, and we're already playing four copies of Kellen, but if we have a Jorkadeen in play, um, most often it's going to be able to get through and draw cards, and if they remove it, uh, most often we want another one. Um, the big change here is, because we're still playing two copies of Wandering Emperor, the big change here is Soul Partition. Now, if you've seen this card uh, against like blue-white control decks and you thought, this card sucks, I think you'd be right in that case. I think Soul Partition is a trap for control style. Um, the reason why Soul Partition is good sometimes is if you intend to win shortly. But this is an unconditional, like removes any permanent, which is great. Uh, the problem is it can come back pretty quick. If you're playing control, that's bad. It's almost like you're you're two for wanting yourself. Um, but if you're playing a tempo deck, which is what we're looking at here in this version of Boros Sword, unconditional removal is great. Get rid of the thing that's in your way, and you continue to bash. So that's what we want to do. That's why we've added Soul Partition. So far in my limited testing, it's been great. Um, other than Soul Partition, the only card we're trying out is Dire Flail. It's another just one mana uh, cast, one mana equip card. That's great to slam on Jorkadine the turn after you play him, or great to slam on Kellen the Fey Blooded. Uh, it's really just not bad anywhere, having just an extra couple points of toughness. I don't know that we're likely to use the craft with artifact ability, because again, we want to win pretty quick. Uh, but we're giving it a try anyway. Other, other than that, like we cut the rest of our sort of cute... Um, Tutor cards like the Lizard Blades and like the little lion that exiles cards from the graveyard. Uh, if we end up against graveyard strategies, uh, we're just going to try to soul partition their uh, pay their payoff and bash anyway. 
that's what we're going for. So we'll see how this does. We're going to pop into, we're still in diamond, uh, brewing around the bottom. I have the tendency to do that, but we'll try to run seven real quick here and see how it goes.